There have definitely been some price changes this month, but I think my recommendation for the mainstream graphics card buyer is still gonna be either the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte or the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte. Now, these two cards are very, very similar in raw performance and the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte costs 370 as opposed to 430. So we're talking a 16% price increase if you wanna go the Nvidia route. I honestly think either way makes sense and if you can't go over $400, get yourself the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte and I think you'll be pretty happy with it. Now that extra 16 percent gets you things like DLSS 4 support in more games than we have FSR 4 support in. FSR 4 now looks quite good. It's almost caught up to DLSS 4's image quality. It's very usable, uh, but again, its game support list uh, hasn't been as good. Now, you can use things like Optiscaler to mod FSR 4 support into a lot of games that don't already have it. Uh, however, if you're talking about games that have anti-cheat, uh, you, you could get banned for doing that. So, you know, there's some inconvenience factors there. There's other feature set differences like productivity software support that's uh, sometimes programmed with more of uh, 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 NVIDIA's CUDA support in mind. Um, things like that. There's multi-frame gen on the uh, 50 series cards, which to me, to me is really only... Um, particularly useful if you have a super high refresh rate display. We're talking like 200 hertz, 240 hertz. Uh, since on a 120 hertz or 140 hertz display, uh, the normal times two frame gen mode, uh, which both brands support, I, I think does just fine since you'd want a you know 60-ish uh, FPS baseline before kicking it on. The point is though that there are some reasons why if it's within your budget, it makes sense to spend the extra 16% to get the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte. But if you need a graphics card under $400, the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte is absolutely Absolutely my recommendation. I think most people will be very happy with this on either a 1080p or 1440p display. I think really they can play the latest titles. Uh, if you're looking at the just biggest, most demanding AAA games at their absolute max settings at 1440p, you might be relying on a bit of upscaling. Um, but again, FSR 4 does a great job. Um, and again, it is nice to have the increased game compatibility support with DLSS 4 if you have that little bit extra in your budget. But I think people are going to be pretty happy with both of these graphics cards. Now, that being said, I understand that this is still outside of many people's price range. If you have to go under $300, I would recommend you go with the 9060 XT's 8 gigabyte version. Now, uh, this has had some price adjustments. This originally launched at $300, but apparently they haven't been able to sell or for whatever reason, the price has already come down on many models. Uh, the lowest price one currently in the United States is $270, and at that price point, it's a strong competitor against NVIDIA's 8GB offerings. NVIDIA recently launched the RTX 5050 at a $250 MSRP, and that is where it's sitting. However, this we're talking only a $20 price difference between the 5050 and the 9060 XT 8GB, and the 9060 XT 8GB offers significantly more raw performance. I think enough so to make up for any sort of um, uh, you know, feature set differences, anything like that, I would take that raw power. And in general, getting an 8GB card right now, uh, just be aware of the caveats with this decision, but there's a lot of power here uh, as long as you don't go over that 8 gigabyte v v VRAM buffer. So if you're playing older games, 8 gigabytes is generally fine. If you're playing competitive games, especially if you turn down graphic settings for a competitive edge, 8 gigabytes is generally fine. It's in the l newer AAA games where we start to see 8 gigabytes falling short when you're at or near the maximum graphic settings in the game. I've shown that the majority of big AAA games released in 2025 can go over 8 gigabytes of VRAM even at 1080p resolution when trying to play at their maximum settings, but generally if you turn down settings, um, I tested out medium, but you can probably go a lot less than that and really tweak individual settings as needed. It can be a little bit of a headache though, uh, you can still get by on 8 gigabytes. So as a budget option under $300, um, I think the 9060 XT 8 gigabyte is the best choice as it offers a lot of raw power. Um, and due to it, the fact that its prices come down and the 16 gigabyte model's price is actually a little over MSRP, we are talking a hundred dollar price gap, which at this price point is actually fairly significant. If we're talking 370 uh, versus 270, that's actually a 37% price difference for two GPUs that actually do have the same raw performance. 
Uh, it's just uh, that, that VRAM capacity thing. Now, I absolutely encourage you, if the 16 gigabyte cards are within your budget, to go for that because I think it will it be very beneficial in the long term of, of you know, <laughs> enjoying a graphics card for a long time without a lot of headaches. But I understand some people need a budget option. And at as we get closer to that 250-ish dollar price point, I stop hating the eight gigabytes so much um, when you have a card like the 9060 XT eight gigabyte, which is offering a lot of performance there. Anyway, just be aware of those headaches. And like I said, if it can fit in your budget, I do think it is worth it to get the 16 gigabyte options. Now, if you wanna go much below this 250-ish dollar price point, I really think you need to start looking at the used market. And today's video is gonna be focusing on new graphics cards. Uh, however, I also want to highlight some of the other pricing changes that have happened this month. So I recently did a video, if we want to jump to the high end now, talking about why the 5080 is possibly the dumbest GPU to buy of this generation, but that was based entirely on its pricing and value. Now, I'm still not gonna recommend anybody buy the RTX 5080, but I do wanna uh, highlight for my viewers that the 5080's price has come down to MSRP now uh, since uh, a couple of weeks ago when I made that video. At the time, and for most of its lifespan, the 5080 had been extremely hard to find below $1,300, occasionally $1,200. At any of those prices, it was terrible. But it's now been fairly easy for the last week or so to get them at their uh, $1,000 MSRP. This is likely because there's a planned 5080 Super coming out um, at least rumors, right? It's not official, but pretty heavily rumored either at the end of 2025 or beginning of 2026, which would be a 24 gigabyte GPU and probably replace the, the baseline 5080. So anyway, I'm just mentioning that its price has come down. That being said though, the 5070 Ti is available at its MSRP of $750. And I still do think that as a high-end GPU option, the 5070 Ti still gets my recommendation. Uh, first of all, let's look at the value proposition. At $1,000 for a 5080 versus $750 for a 5070 Ti, it's $250, which represents 33% price increase to get the more expensive GPU, which is only about 14% more powerful. So we're definitely talking diminishing returns if you get the 5080. But compared to my video where I said it's like the dumbest value proposition out there, that was based on it costing around $1,300. At $1,000, we're talking more typical diminishing returns, in which case um, I think that, you know, if you do have the extra $250 in your budget, you're getting something for it, and it's certainly worse value, and I'm certainly going to recommend the 5070 Ti instead as my high-end GPU recommendation this month. Uh, but it's not as bad of a deal if you do have more money to throw at your GPU option as it has been previously in its lifespan here. But why am I recommending the 5070 Ti instead of the 9070 XT, which has been the, the more popular option uh, with a lot of um, uh, people? Well, it's, it's based on the current pricing. The 9070 XT was launched at an MSRP of $600, but it hasn't really been available at that price. Currently, there's a couple of models available at $700. But if we're talking $700 for the 9070 XT versus $750 for the 5070 Ti, I really don't like the uh, NVIDIA minus $50 uh, you know, price plan for the AMD options. In this case, they both have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And actually in my testing, I've seen that NVIDIA cards tend to be a little more efficient with VRAM usage, meaning I've seen edge, now this is really nitpicking edge cases, but I have seen edge cases like in Spider-Man 2 trying to max out the graphics settings where it actually goes beyond 16 gigabytes on the AMD card, but stays just within it on the NVIDIA card, uh, leading to um, you know uh, some of those edge cases where um, you know, that is a bit of an advantage. I would say the real more determining factor because their performance levels are extremely close uh, is that the, uh, like I said, uh, with the, um, you know, more mid-range cards, DLSS 4 is just available in more games. And so I think that that's uh, an advantage. I think DLSS 4 still looks a little bit better than FSR 4, that's an advantage. And at this price point, you might be more likely to have one of those super high refresh rate displays like 240 Hertz plus where multi-frame gen does become a nice to have feature. 
Also, we're talking a performance tier where path tracing is actually very usable. The 5070 Ti, especially at four, on a 1440p display, uh, using something like DLSS Balanced, uh, can do things like path tracing in Cyberpunk absolutely fine, whereas the 9070 XT uh, is still falling a bit short. Now, AMD's 9000 series has massively closed the ray tracing gap compared to previous generations of AMD versus NVIDIA, but in those heaviest NVIDIA-optimized path tracing workloads, there's still an advantage there uh, for the NVIDIA card. And this is a performance tier where I think that makes sense. Now, if pricing fluctuates uh, by the time you watch this video, or if you're in other regions, if the 9070 XT is more of a significant discount compared to the 5070 Ti, $100 starts to be where I'd be like, I'll recommend both. Um, and then, uh, you know, $150 or, or more um, a savings to get the 9070 XT starts to be like, man, uh, you really should be looking at that option. But right now at an NVIDIA minus 50, um, I think I've got to go with the NVIDIA option, especially when they have the same VRAM capacity here. So my high-end GPU recommendation this month is the 5070 Ti. Now, if you're like, what about the 5090? Isn't that the best high-end GPU? Well, I mean, we can talk about that. The 5090 uh, is uh, currently lowest price available I'm seeing is $2,300. So the 5090 is vastly more powerful than a 5070 Ti, and it's vastly more powerful than a 5080, and honestly, anything else on the market. So if you're in a position where, you know, gaming is your hobby and you have a decent amount of money, spending a couple thousand dollars on your favorite hobby doesn't impact impact you financially. You're not uh, going into debt for this. You're not missing a rent or a mortgage payment. Um, then I think that the 5090 does justify itself, not from a value proposition. It's certainly worse value than even cards like the 5080, but it does open up performance levels that are beyond what anything else can do. So especially if you're on a 4K high refresh rate monitor and like playing, uh, you know, AAA single player titles with the graphics cranked up, uh, the 5090 does that better than anything else and noticeably so. So yeah, I'll throw that out there as a uh, money is no object, is it worth it? Um, it's worth it in the sense that uh, it is a super premium graphics card at 32 gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, it does a lot of stuff really well. It's just gonna be outside of most people's budget to be worth considering. If it's not outside of your budget, yeah, go ahead and buy a 5090. I don't think you'll regret it or anything if that's an amount of money that you're not <laughs> going to uh, feel uh, you know, <laughs> a pain spending here. Now, we've kind of missed the... Um, uh, a certain price segment here, which we should absolutely talk about before we go. So uh, I kind of jumped from the, you know, 5060 Ti, 9060 XT, 16 gigabyte cards, then went to lower budget, then went to high end. So what is there for anybody in between? Uh, well, for the NVIDIA, the step up uh, from like the 5060 Ti is the 5070. Now these come in at $550 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. The AMD alternative is the 9070, which is a 16 gigabyte card and comes in at $600. The 9070 on average is slightly faster than the 5070. In ray tracing, it's at least roughly on par, although in path tracing, it does fall short. Um, now the 9070's main advantage here is that it has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, whereas the 5070 has only 12. But the 9070 costing more than the 5070 makes it a little harder for me to recommend here. So this is where I kind of feel like you're not getting amazing uh, deals at this price point from either one and neither one really stands out to me. So I've got to kind of give a split recommendation at this $600-ish price point. If the 9070 XT version had actually hit its $600 MSRP, I think it would just be the obvious choice. But the 9070 non-XT version at $600 versus Nvidia actually costing less for similar, although a bit less performance, um, and less VRAM, you know, now you start to have the NVIDIA feature set, AMD has more VRAM, slightly more raw performance, but also costs more. I think most people would actually be happier, happy with either of these choices, but if you're somebody who's more concerned about VRAM, uh, the 9070 will take the recommendation. If you're somebody who's more like, you know, honestly turning down a little bit of graphic settings if needed to make sure I'm within 12, it's usually just a tiny tweak. Um, and having that increased, uh, you know, DLSS 4 support in a lot of games and things like that, I think the 5070 will do a great job. 
Uh, but I should mention that we are having rumors of a 5070 Super coming again, either the end of 2025 or beginning of 2026. A 5070 Super is rumored to have 18 gigabytes of VRAM. So again, that's still a long time to wait for rumors that aren't even officially confirmed. So I'm not gonna blame you if you wanna buy something now. Maybe you're putting together a you know back to school computer that you're claiming is for school, but you're actually gonna be playing games on, or maybe it's really both. Anyway, uh, the point is that um, you know if you're not in a rush, if your current graphics card is still getting the job done just fine, but you're kind of having that itch to upgrade, just remember that these super cards are rumored to have more VRAM, and if you're trying to go that NVIDIA route in roughly this price range, 5070 Super uh, is, like I said, rumored to solve that problem. However, we also don't know what pricing will be like at that time. Who knows what will happen regarding, you know, if it has 18 gigabytes of VRAM, do people who are interested in AI buy it up and, 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 and now the price inflates for gamers, or who knows what goes on with tariffs and all that sort of business. Uh, these days. <laughs> anyway, so waiting for future stuff is always has its own inherent risk, but usually better stuff does come out for the same price in general. So uh, not even just for these cards. In general, if you are happy with the GPU you currently have, uh, you can always wait. And uh, I do one of these videos every month and try to keep you guys informed of what's going on in the GPU market. If you want to support what I do here, there is the join button down below to directly support financially. But there's also just the like, subscribe, comment, uh, all that. Appreciate everyone's support. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.